to the pharaoh, seven years of famine are on the way. They're following seven years of plenty. So it, it goes, in Genesis chapter 41 we read, Joseph says, let them gather up all the food of these good years that are coming and lay up grain under the authority of Pharaoh for food in the cities and let them keep it. That food shall be a reserve for the land against the seven years of famine that are to befall the land of Egypt so that the land may not perish through the famine. So isn't this an example of saving up food and storing it in barns for the future? Isn't this God's revelation to Joseph for security in years ahead? The difference in the stories goes back to relationship. Joseph directs the grain to be stored for the good of all the people. He's not storing up grain so that he and Pharaoh can rest and relax while everyone else goes hungry. He's storing it for the common good. But in Jesus' parable, the rich man is obsessed with himself. He refers to himself numerous times. Listen to his language. My crops, my barns, my grain, my goods, my soul. The rich man has not thought of his fertile land as a gift from God. He's not offered prayers of gratitude or thanksgiving. He's not thought about the needs of others or sharing the harvest. Jewish law in Leviticus 19, 9 and 10 instructs, When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of the field or gather the gleanings of the harvest. You shall not strip the vineyard bare or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard you shall leave them for the poor and the alien. Amen. In this way, immigrants and people in need are part of the harvesting team, and they're able to collect their food with dignity. They're included in the social fabric of the community rather than left to fend for themselves. Yet the rich fool does not follow these teachings. He gathers all the abundant harvest for himself, leaving nothing behind. He thinks only of his own relaxation and feasting. The trouble is not that this man is rich. Money is a blessing when it is used properly. The trouble is that the rich man, his focus is not on serving God and his neighbors, but on himself. In both examples of our gospel text, Jesus helps us understand what God sees and values. The man fighting with his brother over inheritance and the rich fool in the story both reveal that one needful thing, the need for right relationship. Commentator Debbie Thomas explains Jesus looks at the man embroiled in a family feud over money and sees his obsessive need for a fair share is twisting and gnarling and embittering his heart. In the heat of his pursuit, he's not able to discern that his inner life is in trouble. Thomas continues, Meanwhile, Jesus looks at the rich landowner, reveling in his stores of grain, and he sees a person drowning in self-absorption. Jesus sees an isolated, insecure soul who has forgotten human connection, forgotten God's generosity and provision, forgotten that possession is not stewardship. As we apply Jesus' teaching to our own time, as we're beginning to emerge from the pandemic, we find ourselves in such an exciting moment, a time of fresh new starts, a new chapter of growth and renewal. And often it's at these times when distractions <coughs> and divisions can spring up and try to hinder our efforts as the body of Christ. All of us have important gifts to offer. Some bring needed financial support, 
others' spiritual gifts, others' energy and joy. So what does it mean to be rich towards God? As the church, in this moment, may we carefully tend and nurture our relationships with God and each other. May we be vigilant and persistent in building each other up as the body of Christ, supporting each other, encouraging each other, working together, shoulder to shoulder, our focus always on God, our gifts put to the service of all God's people. We will be fruitful.